Welcome to the Arabesque Scissors YouTube channel. I'm Ali Phillips and in this video I'm going to take you through how to apply that double fold binding that we made in part two. So we're going to put it along this straight edge of this large pocket here and I'm also going to take you through how to apply it to those tricky curved edges on this pocket here. We're going to also apply this cute little pocket and it's matching flat and finally we're going to bind the whole project so that you can have a beautiful finish for your smart sofa station. You can find the link for the pattern in the description below and if you like sewing organisational videos please consider liking this video and subscribing and if you have comments for other organisational patterns you'd like me to design leave me a comment. Now we're just going to start with the easiest pocket first which has the straight edge so just cut a length of binding uh, just slightly longer than the edge of your straight edge here. And then you're going to take that and fold those wrong sides together. And rather than pressing this to begin with, I just like to take some pins and just pin it um, along the length of it all at about two and a half to three inches apart. And what this does is it helps hold those edges together and stops them stretching unevenly. And you can see that just by uh, flattening this out gently. And you can see that by uh, going along and just doing this extra step of pinning your two edges together, um, that you're going to get a really nice finish on this binding because it won't be uh, puckering and stretching unevenly. So now we're going to flip the pocket over to the wrong side and we're just going to um, leave a slight overhang on one end of the pocket and then just grab your binding clips and clip this along the edge here or you can pin it um, because this isn't uh, lots of layers that, that are very thick um, you'll be able to um, pin it or clip it whichever is your preference. So now at, back at the sewing machine um, I'm going to use a quite a generous quarter inch seam allowance here uh, so that my binding will end up being the same thickness as it is on the thicker pockets. So just use your stiletto and take it really slowly. Keep readjusting everything if you need to and you'll get a really lovely finish. And you can see when you turn this over and flip the uh, binding back to the right side that you're going to get just a really lovely amount that's going to just cover the first line of stitch. So now we're going to move on to binding the trickier pocket which has the curved edges. So just cut the length of binding that the pattern requires and go along and pin those two edges together just like we did on the last one. So just grab your pocket with the curved edges uh, that we've got here and take your binding and uh, leave a little bit of an overhang and you can start clipping that um, along the curved edge and the trick to binding a curved edge here is rather than curve the binding around the edge we're actually going to straighten out the edge so that the binding is going to meet it that way so just as you go straighten out your edge and clip as you go around and you'll find that that's a much easier way of getting the curve to meet rather than trying to bend the binding. So now that this is all clipped we're going to take this to the sewing machine and keep this stretched out straight as we can and stitch all the way along at a quarter inch seam allowance but we're going to stop right on that corner a quarter of an inch away. Now I actually find it easiest to uh, not use clips, um, I like to use pins um, just on this thinner pocket here and um, I don't actually like to clip it the whole way along either because um, I just find it easier to just ease it around as I go. So you're just going to be trying to straighten that curve out and this means that you won't overstretch your binding or you won't understretch it either. So 
you just take it really slowly. Keep using that generous quarter inch seam allowance. Keep your stiletto in your hand so that you can um, keep all your layers together. And then as you go around the curve, just straighten out the curve rather than trying to fit the binding to the curve and you'll find you'll be able to get your foot of your machine in there much easier. And then as we approach the corner, I'm just going to stop and mark a dot a quarter of an inch away from the corner. And that will just give me something to uh, line my needle up to. And so I'll go right up to that dot and then back stitch and then cut my threads. So now I'm just going to have a little dry run um, fitting the binding to the curve here and just check that I'm happy with how snugly it's fitting here. And now we're ready to mitre the corner. So you just fold back um, a corner at a 45 degree angle here and use your stiletto tool just to flatten it all out and then use that as a straight edge to align it exactly right on the corner there and then make the binding parallel to the edge there. So just continue stitching along this straight edge and stop uh, when you reach the other corner and back stitch at a quarter of an inch away from the, uh, the next corner. So now we're going to uh, fold the second mitre. So just fold this back on the 45 degree angle and use your stiletto tool as a straight edge to get a really nice crisp corner here. And then just continue stitching down this uh, second curve here. And you should find this one slightly easier than the first one uh, because the rest of the work is actually out of the way. So just keep straightening up the curve to meet the binding rather than the other way around. Take it really slowly and you'll get a really lovely snug binding that fits nice and tightly. So now just flip your work back to the right side and unfold your binding and then you can just start uh, folding this back over the first line of stitching and pressing this into place and then we're just going to uh, manipulate everything as we go around to fold those mitered edges down and make everything tuck in nice and neatly. So don't be afraid to just take your time here as you uh, manipulate these corners to make a really neat mitre. Um, you can just uh, take the stretch of the bias to your advantage and when you're happy with it, um, I like to just take my handy dandy glue applicator and just run a bead of glue um, close to the stitching that we've already done and press all that into place. And then you can just set that glue with giving it a good press with the iron. And just continue folding uh, your edge around, um, gluing it and manipulating it until you're happy with how it's sitting. And then just work your way around the other side, just tucking everything in and making sure that that mitre meets beautifully uh, right on the corner. Give it another good press. And then you can glue that side into place as well. So now just take your work back to the sewing machine and top stitch that binding down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, keeping your stiletto still in your hand to help uh, tuck everything in and hold everything down. And uh, just go slowly and uh, you'll have a really lovely finish. So the last thing we're going to do to this large pocket is apply this miniature pocket that just goes in the front. So just follow the directions on the pattern, centre it and then pin this into place and then you can top stitch 
uh, right around the edges of this pocket um, at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're going to attach the flap that just sits above the little pocket here. So I like to just measure with my ruler where it needs to be and then just run um, a bead of glue um, right along the edge there. And glue basting is just a really neat way of holding this in place. And then we can take this to the machine and top stitch along the flap. And finally, I'm going to round the corners of this pocket uh, just the way we did uh, when we made the base and baste these edges and then trim them off. So now we're going to bind the final part of our base and I like to start on the wrong side and I like to start on the side that has uh, the least amount of pockets and flaps so that there's just less uh, layers to cope with and less things to get in the way and gives you a really nice place to do the final join on the binding. So just take your length of binding and I've joined all the sections together here. And I've made sure that I've got a really generous amount of overlap uh, that I can join at the end. So just like we did with the previous lengths of binding that we had, I'm just going to fold this uh, wrong sides together and I'm going to go down the length of it and just pin uh, about every two and a half to three inches apart. And this just helps keep both edges of the binding um, at the same amount of stretch so that you don't stretch one uh, more than the other. And it's just a really nice way of um, getting a really even result. So now I'm just going to do a dry run of uh, laying out the binding um, just loosely all the way around the base uh, just to make sure that I've got enough and that I'm going to be happy with uh, how the joins are all lining up. So you can see I've got a generous amount of overlap here and I'm going to be happy with uh, starting and ending about on this section. So now I'm just going to place a couple of clips um, about the section where I'm going to start. Um, I'm not going to pick clip or pin mine all the way around um, but if you would like to do this then just feel free to uh, just go ahead and clip this right around the edge of the base if you would like to. So I'm starting to stitch here with a generous quarter inch seam allowance um, where there's no pockets but as I come up to uh, where there is uh, some pockets and more layers, I'm going to just taper that seam allowance down to um, a scant quarter inch seam allowance. And so just by varying your seam allowance as you come up to different thicknesses along the base, uh, you'll find that you'll have a much more even amount uh, to turn around to the front side. So as you approach the corner here, just use your stiletto to ease that binding. Uh, make sure you're really not stretching it or you'll find that your binding ends up being too tight at the end. So just take it really slowly. And here I'm just folding the length of my uh, base in half so that it's not uh, dragging and pulling on the work um, as I'm going around. So just really use that stiletto to tuck everything uh, together, all, the, like, all those layers, so that you'll get a really nice even amount of binding. So even though I've uh, sped up the footage here, um, I'm actually going really slowly with this. Um, I'm stopping quite a bit and sometimes I lift up the presser foot and just readjust everything. So just don't be scared to uh, take your time here and, um, and you'll find that you're much happier with the result in the end.
Now as I'm coming up on the last side um, I'm going to stop and back stitch um, about 10 inches or so away from where I began. So now you can begin to see uh, the effect that you have of the binding around the edge and we've got this nice gap in the middle but we want to be able to join these two ends up with the same mitered join that we joined everything else up with but we want that to be nice and snugly against the base. So my method for joining these two edges is to spread those two tails apart and then with your fabric pen just place a mark roughly in the centre between those two um, ends. So then you need to take one of your loose ends, doesn't matter which one you select, and just give it a slight stretch and place it on top of uh, what you've already marked and then mark on top of the line that you marked the first time. So now we need to add seam allowance onto the end of this tail and the seam allowance needs to be the same as the folded width of the binding that we have here. So the folded width of this binding here is one and one eighth inches wide and so we want to add the same amount of seam allowance, one and one eighth inches, onto the mark that we've marked here. So we need to place a mark at the one and an eighth inch line, then you can remove a pin and then rule a vertical line um, on the binding here and that is going to be your cutting line. And that line that you've marked becomes your cutting line where you can trim off that excess binding. Okay, so now we're going to repeat this in reverse for the other tail. So line up your binding by giving it a little stretch and place a mark over the original mark that you did at the beginning. Then mark with your ruler a one and one eighth inch length extension onto that line. Then rule a vertical line down the length of the binding and then you can trim that off. So now we're going to join these two ends together and to do that you just need to remove a few pins from each side so that you can open both of these ends up. So here on the left hand piece I'm going to mark um, a 45 degree line with my pen. And I've already got a nice um, stripe here that's going to be a good stitching line. But if you don't, just mark a line here and that will become your stitching line. So now take the right hand piece and place it right side up with the short side horizontal. Then take the left hand piece, place it right side down with the short side vertical. Then we're going to place four pins all around those joints so that we can hold all those sections together nice and firmly. So you just work your way around, keeping everything nice and flat and neatly lined up until you've got all four pins in. So now let's take this to the sewing machine and stitch along that line that we've marked. So now just fold everything out of the way so that everything's flat and you're not distorting uh, that pin section that you've done. And then just nice and slowly stitch along that line, uh, removing the pins as you go down all the way to the bottom and you will need to back stitch. So you just remove the remaining pins and then you can just do a quick dry fitting here. Uh, just check that you're happy with uh, how it's sitting, uh, whether it's tight enough. So if you're happy with that, you can go ahead and trim off that corner that was left over. And then you can just either finger press this seam open or you can just uh, grab your iron and just give it a really quick press uh, so that you can get a really lovely flat join. So now just lay it out and have a look at how it's all sitting. If you're happy with how it's all looking, just grab a few clips and clip that remaining loose edge uh, down and then you can take that to the machine and finish stitching along there. 
So now comes what I think is the most exciting part. Uh, you're nearly done. You can flip this back to the right side and start pulling all that binding back around to the top. And then just grab your iron and start pressing everything down into place. So the aim here is that you just want this edge to just cover the previous line of stitching that's underneath it. So just play with it here and manipulate it a little bit um, as you go around. A good bit of steam will actually help set this in place as well. And then I like to just grab my trusty uh, little glue applicator here. And my best tip for binding is to glue everything. So you're just going to place a really thin bead of glue just um, inside that stitching line and then just press that edge exactly where you want it to be. So it's just covering the previous line of stitching. And then just hit it with your iron, which will actually help set that glue, help it to dry and really hold it in place. And then just keep working your way around in short sections and pressing it down until you've gone all the way around. Then hit it with the iron again and until you've got all that binding stuck down into place. So now we're back at the sewing machine and we're ready to top stitch everything down. So you can really decide uh, where you'd like to start on this. Probably start on a straight section and just stitch uh, nice and slowly. You're still going to need your uh, stiletto tool here. Um, just fold your base up so that it's not going to drag and just go really slowly as you work your way around just stitching uh, nice and close to the edge of that binding. And when you're done, you can flip it over and just have a quick check on the back. And I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. It's not 100% perfect, but using the method that I've shown you, you can actually get a really lovely result that looks pretty even on both sides. <laughs> 